So what we have almost always seen with gaming is that it is limited by your graphics card and not your CPU. And the only outliers of this have typically been strategy games. Things are starting to change and games are becoming more and more CPU limited, so much so that the fastest CPU in the world, the Ryzen 7800X3D, at least for gaming, can't always keep up. Now this is a CPU that boasts eight cores and 16 threads. But the amount of cores in a CPU doesn't tell the entire story for gaming, because if that was the whole story, then this 7950X also from AMD would just be the fastest CPU out there. That's 16 physical performance cores. No, 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 no. What makes the 7800X 3D has 96 megabytes of L3 cache. Yeah, cache can be a little bit hard to understand, but just know bigger number means better. Compared to a CPU that I own, which is the Ryzen 5900X, 12 cores on this CPU, it only has 64 megabytes of cache, which is quite a bit, but nothing compared to the, the proportional relationship the 7800X 3D has. The 7800X 3D can't always keep up in games. All this isn't really bashing the CPU industry itself, like the manufacturers AMD and Intel, because Generation on generation, they typically see really good performance uplift, at least in the single core performance. I mean, 7000 series Ryzen CPUs are really good and 13th gen Intel CPUs are also really good. More the software side of things. And you can see from Daniel Owen, he has a great video on this. This was back when Jedi Survivor, the new Star Wars game, was running pretty poor and he's showing the fastest hardware on the market the 7800x 3d and the rtx 4090 couldn't even max out this game at 60 fps this is because you see in the top left corner here cpu limited why nowadays though our game is getting a more and more cpu limited bounding volume hierarchy basically what your cpu is doing it is organizing every object it needs to know what objects that ray is going to hit objects it doesn't have to interact with and your cpu is the one that figures out all of those details in the gist of things ray tracing uses quite a bit of cpu and when you are buying say the fastest hardware out there a 7800x 3d and rtx 4090 which is 1600 dollars you probably are maxing out your games you're maxing out the ray tracing capability so in a lot of these cases the ray tracing becomes an issue i know i know a lot of you are probably thinking is like oh boohoo rtx 4090 owners that paid 1600 dollars for their graphics card can't max out their games oh this is a terrible thing and we should all cry for them that's not what i'm saying okay these aren't cpu limitation problems that are in like an esports game where you're running at 400 or 500 fps it is still a cpu limit it's irrelevant you know, the real problem is with these CPU limitations, even with the fastest chips in the world, they can't get the game up to 60 FPS. What are we talking about ones that are below that? Because this problem can extend to way more people than just the ones that have the absolute fastest parts on the market. You can say here, I used to run on a Ryzen 5 1600. So this is from 2017. This thing destroyed my system with CPU bottlenecks. So this is some footage from way back before I upgraded my computer. I still had that Ryzen 1600 and a GTX 1070. It's obvious that the GPU is limited to about 80% of its capabilities. Fortnite high settings, DirectX 11. A CPU was throttling my GPU in this case. I want to mention too, the first gen Ryzen CPUs definitely weren't known for their gaming performance as games progress and more and more games shift to the system of relying on the CPU more and more. Is that just going to make so many CPUs obsolete? Because they can't even reach 60 FPS. Those people that didn't choose to upgrade their CPUs but did upgrade their graphics cards and want to experience ray tracing, can you even try ray tracing because the CPU limits are so bad. You can't change settings to experience ray tracing at that point because if you use say DLSS or FSR to run at a lower resolution, you're still CPU limited. Obviously, I'm not a developer. And what I've seen, uh, more and more people nowadays have access to higher core count CPUs. You have eight cores on your CPU and the game typically won't use all that. So I'm obviously going to oversimplify this. Just utilizing more cores concept on your CPU is similar to like how Minecraft, you know, the base model Minecraft Java edition only used one core on your CPU. And a lot of people always advocated to go get Optifine because Optifine ran so much smoother. And that's because it used two cores of your CPU. Then Optifine performance wasn't enough and some modders made Sodium, which utilizes 
about all the CPU that it can. It uses as many cores as possible and leverages them to its fullest potential. And we saw another huge FPS increase. Similar how it went for Minecraft, that same optimization process can happen with these other games. Now, they're not in a situation they're only using one core on your CPU. Hopefully that illustrates that more of your CPU can be used in games. I was gonna say a little disclaimer. I went back to go get footage for this and usually native Minecraft doesn't run that well. But all of a sudden I was running Minecraft and it ran better than the Optivine version of it. So I was really confused. <laughs> Let me know if they did crazy optimization for Minecraft that I just missed or something. Because it seems like CPU technology can't directly keep up with how fast games are progressing when the newest GPUs are completely outpacing them in games. So games probably need to be programmed differently to access more of the CPU, access all of the cores that are available. Obviously, this would improve performance. If games were using all eight cores of your CPU, say in my case, I have 12 cores. If I used 12 cores of my CPU, it'd be really fast. Caveat to this is that it's really hard to program because it isn't like your GPU that has thousands of cores on it. It is your CPU and the game expects to have a certain number of cores and then programming all the separate tasks in a game in order to utilize each core to its fullest potential is a lot of development time. And typically, it hasn't been worth it. But with CPU limitations becoming more and more prevalent, honestly, developers are gonna need to spend more time optimizing for CPUs and getting the best experience for most people, especially if they wanna use technologies that are so CPU heavy, like ray tracing. The ray tracing technologies that they, they spent development time on, nobody's gonna use it. Now, another option with this is obviously GPUs have hardware ray tracing accelerators on them. You know, that's what makes everything from RTX 2000 series and onwards be able to run ray tracing properly along with AMD 6000 series and 7000 series. And developers can find ways to take away some of the CPU workload and transfer it over to the GPU. It is important to take into account though to find the advantage and the balance between using the CPU and using the GPU so that you aren't just leveraging your GPU way too much and then your FPS also is lower than it could have been. However, all of this can easily be growing pains of this new technology. At the moment, it's not optimized in a way that it's leveraging the GPU as much as it could or trying to alleviate a lot of the issues that CPUs have right now. Years to come, things could be a lot better. I guess we'll have to wait and see. And all we can do is advocate you know, to keep improving CPU performance. We, if we keep seeing games that are terribly CPU optimized, then we should just keep calling it out. Don't let developers get away with it. Even if it wasn't the developer's fault, maybe it was the publisher's fault, not rushing the time or whatever. Yeah, do you have the fastest CPU in the world? Or after hearing all this, do you want the fastest CPU in the world? I mean, at least for gaming, okay. I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts. I'll see you in the comments, see you in the next video, and you have a good one. Peace.